I'm going to show you how you can configure SNMP traps on your Zabbix. And for this setup, I'm going to be using the CentOS Stream Release 9. And I'm mentioning that because SNMP traps is one of the few things where you don't really configure communication between the end device and the Zabbix directly, like your network device or whatever, will not be sending SNMP trap to the Zabbix server as an application. It will be sending SNMP trap to the host where the Zabbix server or the proxy is installed, on which we're going to configure the script that's going to do the trap processing, um, reformatting it for the purposes of the Zabbix, writing it in a separate SNMP trap log file from which the internal process of the of the Zabbix will actually read the trap, match it to some sort of the host in the front end, and then you can see it in the latest data. And there is more than one ways how you can configure SNMP traps. There is a good old Perl script. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, there is also a bash script. Uh, you can do that with uh, SNMP TT. So multiple ways. And again, we will be using the Perl script. We will have to install a few packages. And if you are not using something from the family of the RHEL 9 or Eight, um, you might have some troubles with uh, finding the packages that we need, but uh, again, give it a try. And uh, let's move back to uh, to the computer. So here I have my what do I have? Here I have my terminal, right? And uh, as I said, it is the what it is CentOS Stream Release Nine, and uh, we are again going to be using the wiki page documentation from the InitMax uh, with all the commands. But I will be basically commenting what each of those do and why do we have to set it up. And this guide will also be available in the description. And this guide is also done on the rel 9 uh, so that it seems uh, as we can see somewhere here Zabbix on rel 9 operating system. So I do hope that everything will be fine also on my descent OS stream. So as I said, like we need to configure something in the middle between the end device that will be sending the traps and the Zabbix. So to do that, we will have to install a couple of new packages. And here you can see that we need to install uh, NetSNMP, which is the main package containing all the necessary stuff for SNMP trapping. NetSNMP Perl, which is the Perl model for SNMP, because as I said, uh, we will be using the Perl script. And NetSNMP Utils, which uh, used for debugging uh, mostly, but uh, which makes them optional. But uh, yeah, we'll just copy paste everything. Uh, go here to my uh, CLI and try to install it. I will add minus uh, Y to like confirm everything. Uh, there we go. We're downloading the packages. Uh, this process is uh, hopefully pretty fast because the packages are not uh, too big in a size. And there we go. So all the required packages right now are installed for us to use the Perl script. But where can I get the Perl script? I don't have it. I don't code in Perl, whatever. I don't understand anything. That's not a problem because basically the Perl script can be found in official uh, Git repository of the Zabbix. Oops, this doesn't work like that. Uh, Git Zabbix. And uh, where can we find it uh, in, 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 in the main Zabbix? Uh, then somewhere in the MISC, SNMP trap, and there we go. As I said, there are two options. One is uh, the bash script, which also works, and the second one is a Perl script. There are different categories of people who prefer one or another, but again, this tutorial will be about the Perl one. So this is the script that we need, and uh, here you can check all the lines. It's sitting like this for quite many years without any modifications, so don't you worry. And uh, easy way how you can get on your computer is to copy paste this command. So basically, we're using a curl to download this file, the one that I've just opened here in a git of the Zabbix. And uh, we are pasting this file, the script in a user bin and calling it Zabbix trap receiver dot Perl extension. So again, open my CLI copy paste, click enter, as we can see the file downloaded. And now we can check with ls user bin Zabbix trap receiver uh, Perl, we can yes, confirm that the file is here. Then obviously, since this is the script, and uh, 
obviously something will be executing the script. And right now, if we will type ls minus lah, we can see that the permissions are uh, root root and everyone else is able only to read it, which is not sufficient. That's why we need to add execute uh, permissions on our script. So again, just uh, copy paste and we can type a less again and right now you can see that we have execute permissions which means that we will be able to use our script let's set it the script um, we can use nano or vi or whatever else you prefer i will use uh, vi edit the script and what do we need to change i don't actually remember this step here set the variable oh snmp trapper file remember in the beginning i said like we have a script in the middle who receives the trap from some SNMP device or whatever, then translates it to the format suitable for the Zabbix and writes in a separate trap log file from which, from which the internal process of the Zabbix actually reads it. So here we need to specify what will be the location of this log file for SNMP traps in which the script will write it. Um, so SNMP trapper file, uh, here it is, and the default value is tmp, zabbix underscore traps dot tmp. And uh, this uh, guide is suggesting us to change it to var log, which might be like var log could be the uh, more suitable option for where you want to write, uh, obviously, the log files. But for me, for the sake of testing, I will leave it as is tmp, zabbix traps tmp, just because I'm pretty much sure. Uh, as much as I remember, uh, the default location in the Zabbix server config file where you also need to specify where this um, log file is located um, will be, um, yeah, write the TMP. And actually, while I'm saying this, I just remember that I don't even have a Zabbix uh, server up and running here, but we will fix that uh, pretty fast. So yeah, SNMP trapper file, this, uh, dun, 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 so the path in the way is guaranteed, the server is restarted, in our case will be the, yeah, so this is the option in the Zabbix server. So let's do it right now. Let's actually install the Zabbix server. That's going to be very quick. Download Zabbix packages. I'm going to install 6.4. It is CentOS Stream 9, uh, server front and agent, uh, MySQL, Apache, whatever. Let's go with the easiest uh, example. Um, edit the file. Let's see. Yum repos D Apple repo. VI. There is no such file. CentOS, so there's no Apple repository. Uh, let me check. Yum search Zabbix. No matches found and everything is good. We can add the repository. Repository is added. Um, I don't think we need to clean all and install all the packages that we have here. So this is done and uh, we'll also need to install the MySQL server obviously. So yum install uh, mysql minus uh, server minus yes to confirm everything. Okay, MySQL is also install installed. So let's start it. Systemctl start uh, mysql d uh, then after mysql or mysql no matter what you perform prefer is started you can type in mysql and then we need to execute a couple of commands first of all we need to create a database uh, for the zabbix and for the sake of testing we can call it zabbix uh, then we need to create a user for the zabbix and we can just change the password to zabbix um, yep and then we are granting all the privileges to our zabbix user uh, to the Zabbix database that we just created and we need to set the global uh, log bin trust function equal one to be able to install uh, to import the schema uh, then we can quit and then we need to import all the files in um, we need to import the default schema data and also the images from the packages of the Zabbix server that we just installed into the MySQL database that we just created. So password was Zabbix. This will again take a couple of seconds to import all the data into the database. 
Okay, so that is done. And then we need to edit the config file of the Zabbix server, which is etsy zabbix zabbix server.conf. We need to change db password because the default is none. So db name is Zabbix, db user by default is Zabbix, and db password, we need to change it also for uh, Zabbix. And at the same time, while we are here, we can go back to the configuration of our SNMP traps. And here we can see that we need to find uh, a SNMP trapper file parameter, right? So let's go back here and search for SNMP. And for SNMP trapper file, there it is, SNMP trapper file equals uh, var log SNMP trap, SNMP trap dot log. So I was wrong. The default value is not TMP, but that is the one to which I will actually change it. Um, location doesn't matter so much. Just make sure that the location here in a Zabbix server config file is the same as it is in your uh, in your in your Perl script, and also make sure that uh, both the Perl script and also the Zabbix have access to the directory, so they can actually write to the log file. And then, since we are here, since we're in the Zabbix server config file, we also can change the second parameter, which is start SNMP trapper. Right? Remember again, as I said, there will be internal process of the Zabbix who will be responsible to read this log file and capture all the traps. So this is this the process which is not enabled by default. So what we need to do is change zero to one start this an MP trapper, uh, right and quit. Those are the only changes that we need to do in a Zabbix server config file. So right now, um, I will actually disable the SL Linux just for the sake of no trouble. And systemctl start Zabbix server, everything should be fine. Uh, we can check uh, the log file in the var log Zabbix Zabbix server dot log, we can see that it is started. Uh, agent doesn't run. That's okay. I didn't even start it. And uh, let's also access the front end. And here is IP address of uh, front end. And uh, we need to add Oh, no, we need to system CTL start HTTPD and PHP FPM. And now we can try to access the front end. And we need to add slash Zabbix in the end. And there we go. And we'll have to do the first time installation configuration wizard. So next, everything here is green, click next, uh, database type MySQL, local host name Zabbix user Zabbix password is also Zabbix, uh, click next, and Zabbix server name. Um, yeah, whatever subscribe, that's the best thing how you can help uh, click next step, next step. And there we go, finish. Um, default username is admin and a default password is lowercase Zabbix. So right now, at least we have our Zabbix ready. And I will use the moment to advertise like for those who haven't watched the previous uh, video. Um, this main channel now it is main channel is only about a Zabbix only about a monitoring, but I do like to create videos about something else. Um, other tech related stuff like Linux, Windows apps, software devices, hardware network, whatever. And uh, YouTube is rough. And whenever I post the videos on this channel, they don't perform so good because this channel audience is mainly about a monitoring and Zabbix. So if you're interested in all other tech stuff, then you will find the link to my second channel uh, in the description of the video. Uh, if that's something you're interested about, then please click subscribe and we'll see you there uh, twice a week, Monday and Wednesday, I'm releasing a new videos. So uh, let's continue. Um, I will double check the, the script. I will double check the script uh, because uh, remember, we had an issue with not an issue, we had an issue. No, we had different uh, locations of uh, of log files, TMP, Zabbix underscore traps dot TMP. And in Zabbix config file, TMP, Zabbix underscore traps dot TMP. So everything's good. They match, right? Clean. Um, what else? SNMP settings, nano SNMP, SNMP trap D dot conf. This is the place where we need to um, tell what will actually happen when well, I will do not the nano I will do VI for the sake of uh, 
what I'm used to. Here we need to specify, like below you can see example configuration for SNMP v1, v2, and 3, including the script mentioned above. You can define more than one SNMP community. Um, so if you plan to use SNMP v3 traps, then of course you need to create a user with all the authentication parameters that are required for um, SNMP v3. And uh, for SNMP v1 and 2, you can just uh, execute, change the community, like uh, here it is in it max. By default, it's going to be public. I will not change it. And uh, the most important, we need to tell what do we actually want to do every time when the trap appears in when we receive the trap. And what we want to do, we want to execute this Zabbix trap receiver Perl script. So this line is definitely mandatory. Uh, I will go here and paste it here. So whenever we receive a trap, I want to execute the trap receiver script. I'm not going to play around with SNMPv3 or, or different communities. If that's where you need an assistance, like there's some attentions, uh, at least eight characters, then go ahead to the initmax wiki link in the description and uh, yeah, read more carefully. So configure the log rotation for SNMP trap dot log file. This is also not mentioned in other tutorials, but I think it's a very important thing because uh, this log file, which is going to be in the TMP after we will receive the first trap, it's going to contain all of your traps that all of your devices are sending to the Zabbix server or the proxy. It could be hundreds, thousands or hundred thousands of traps. And if you don't have a log rotation configured, then obviously the file will grow huge, which can cause uh, problems, including just running out of the disk space eventually. So it does make sense to go to the Etsy log rotate SNMP trap and uh, configure some uh, rotation policy for this log file. I will not do that again. If you have a firewall, make sure that uh, it is allowed to receive SNMP traps and uh, yeah, to apply and successfully uh, process SNMP traps, we need to have SNMP trap D process up and running. So I'm gonna restart, but for me, it's actually the first start right now. Stop unnecessary services, like for SNMP traps, we don't need SNMPD, uh, right? So you can stop it if you want. Zabbix server configuration, edit SNMP trapper file. Remember, we already did this. Uh, the only difference is that my location of the log is not the var log SNMP trap, it's uh, TMP. SNMP, whatever you remember. And as I said, we need to start SNMP trapper, which by default is turned off. And we specify the value one so that it is available. For the proxy, same stuff, just different configuration file, right? If you're configuring SNMP traps for the proxy, etsy zabbix zabbix proxy .conf, uh, specify location of SNMP trap file and uh, start the trapper and restart the proxy. So now basically everything is configured. Uh, we'll do the testing and make sure that everything works. And I will also add a comments about different item items that we can have for SNMP traps. So let's send a test SNMP v2 trap uh, simulating typo guys. Now link down with the following command. Uh, let's do it, copy paste. And I think it's not gonna work with the community in it max. Uh, the default one is public, local host, yeah, sent, hopefully. And right now we should check our log file. I really hope that uh, there will be something like last TMP, um, what was the log file? Uh, there's no log file, right? No access configuration dropping trap. Um, okay, let's go back to editing uh, SNMP trap D dot conf. Apparently, we need to add uh, we need to add this um, community name uh, for SNMP v1 v2. public, right quit, restart the SNMP trap D, send trap, check the log, 
think it should be fine now. SL Linux is preventing from, yeah, but I have SL Linux in the permissive. So let's check the TMP. Zabbix underscore traps dot TMP. And here we have our trap that we just sent. So you have an example of the troubleshooting. Uh, check var log messages. So we received a trap in the log file that we uh, just created. But obviously here in Zabbix, if we go data collection host, we have one Zabbix server, which is even red and not working because agent is not starting. So how can I actually, um, how can I receive the trap? So let's get keep reading. Uh, let's scroll down proxy configuration. No testing configuration. You can verify that the SNB trap was sent correctly by checking the log file. Yes, it's there. Uh, we find uh, the trap, everything good. This is the command if you want to test uh, sending out SNMP v3 again. But what do we need to configure in Zabbix? First, you must prepare the selected host for monitoring using SNMP in a Zabbix. You can do this by adding a SNMP interface. So yeah, that's the first thing that we are matching for. Let's create a new host, um, SNMP traps, let's call it like that. And we need to add an interface SNMP 127001. That's going to be correct for us, right? So SNMP community, uh, host group, Linux servers, the SNMP community, I will put it hard coded public here, uh, and click add. So we I will delete the Zabbix server host just to make it easier. So we have a SNMP traps host uh, with SNMP interface configured in our test configuration, we'll use local host because we are testing to send the SNMP traps from the local host to the local host. So it's local host. The SNMP community needs to be adapted to based on your configuration. And for SNMP trap, the community is already evaluated at the level of configuration file uh, here, just like we configured in the SNMP trap d.conf. If you want, you can use the macros as this video is not about that. So basically, uh, that's it. And uh, yeah, let me try to remember now. So let's create an item. Uh, item, create a new, I will call it match, whatever, uh, type SNMP trap, and key SNMP trap regular expression. Um, let's make it true. And type text, add. And I will create another one. I will call it fallback so that you will understand right away uh, what's the difference and call it uh, choose the type SNMP trap key, make it SNMP trap fallback, you will understand what it is, I will make it also text. That's it. So we have two items, one SNMP trap true, which is the regular expression to which we're going to try to match our traps. And the second one is SNMP trap dot fallback. So let's go back. Uh, let's go to the monitoring latest data. Uh, open my host here, Linux servers, um, SNMP traps host, apply, show details, two items, fallback and the one with the regular expression, none of them have any value received. So let's go back to our CLI and let's send, uh, um, I'm not sure if that's going to work like that. Let me actually, let me check the trap once again, uh, how it looks here, not here in uh, less TMP, Zabbix traps TMP. So if MIB link down, right? So when the link will be down, I want to receive this item, uh, this trap in my matching item configuration. So I will change the SNMP trap uh, from true to if me blink down. That's I will put it even in the quotes. Like this, click update. And uh, yeah, all good. And now I can try to send the trap and see what happens next. So execute sending the trap once again, I will open the TMP traps and we can see that we have two traps received. And in theory, right now, if I will refresh this page, I should have I don't have wait, 
I don't have anything. So what could be wrong? It is local host, uh, TMP, Zabbix, Traps, .tmp, Etsy, Zabbix, Zabbix, Server, Conf, SNMP, Zabbix, Traps, TMP. Ah, see, uh, wrong, uh, wrong location of the log file. So we need to change this to TMP Zabbix underscore traps dot TMP, right quit every time when we make a change to the uh, config file of the Zabbix server, we need to restart Zabbix server. Now let's try to send it again, <clears throat> sending the trap, reload the front end. And we received the value in the fallback. And we received it in the fallback for just one reason, because none of the items actually matched uh, matched the value. Why could that happen? Let's try to fix that. Let's go to the matched item configuration. Maybe let this, let's do it like this. Link down, SNMP trap, link down, text, yes, click update. And let's send the value one more time. There we go, we received it under, uh, let me actually delete the history, right? Just to make it easier, go back to the item configuration, item configuration, clear history and trends, and clear history and trends, go back to the monitoring latest data, Again, we have two items, one is fallback, the second one, which is matching, both are empty, no values, I am sending the trap. And this trap contains the value of uh, link down. So this trap is caught under our matching item, right? Here it is. Here is the trap. And the SNMP trap dot fallback item, which doesn't have any regular expression, that is meant to capture all the traps that were sent to this host, to this IP address, localhost, but uh, none of our regular items that are matching based on the regular expression actually matched the regular expression. So it is showing all the values that were not applied to any of the dedicated items. And to test that we can send right now, let's say link up, link up, trap is sent, let's check in the TMP, um, Zabbix underscore traps TMP. Here it is link up. And right now we don't have a dedicated item for link up, we have it for the link down. So it should not appear here, but it should appear in the SNMP trap fallback. And there we go. Here is the link up, right? And here is the link down. So that's all the magic how you can configure a SNMP trapping in the Zabbix um, with a Perl script. Hope that uh, it will be beneficial for you. And thank you guys for watching. As usually, we'll see you in the next videos. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.